So thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, as Ashley said, uh, we are CIL. We're a nonprofit real estate development company um, that was founded over 40 years ago in Connecticut, specifically to develop housing for people with disabilities. And, um, and I'm Chris Canna, the Vice President of Real Estate Development as Ashley said uh, today, and this is an introduction to CIL. So I wanted to uh, start by just doing a quick um, overview of our history as an organization um, and the main type of housing product that we've developed in that time. Um, and the reason for us being here is that we've, we were founded in Connecticut. We've worked in Connecticut and Massachusetts um, for over for the past 45 years, but we are looking to expand nationally. So it's great to be in front of a more you know, national audience uh, than we typically talk to. So thank you very much. Um, so CIL was founded in 1979 with a very specific mission, uh, and that was to close the Manfield Training School in Connecticut or provide housing that would allow people to close, the state to close the Mansfield Training School in Connecticut. We were founded by six advocacy organizations and service providers like the Ark of Connecticut, Easter Seals of Connecticut uh, and others uh, because they realized they didn't have the real estate expertise to create the hundreds of housing units that would be needed uh, to move the thousand or so residents out of the institution uh, and other institutions. So they founded CIL to provide that real estate expertise. And for the first three years we existed, um, we thought the form of that help would be as true consultants, that we would work with service providers and advocates and families to develop houses using HUD 202 funds at the time, um, but basically using affordable housing funds. Uh, the problem was that the HUD funding process moved so slowly that in the first three years we existed, we didn't develop a single house. And we needed to develop hundreds of housing units to, um, to be able to move people out of the institution. So our CEO at the time um, realized we needed more of a production model, particularly since we were developing you know, single family homes for you know, three to six individuals. You're competing in a single family home market it's hard to tell a seller of a property, oh, you know, wait a year while I get my HUD financing in order. You need something that can move a lot quicker. Um, so in 1983, we purchased our first property. Uh, it was a ranch home in uh, the Hartford suburbs for Park, the Hartford Arc. Um, and we used the development model that we largely you know, use to this day. A lot of the details have changed, but basically we were able to use a line of credit with a private bank for acquisition and construction. Today, that bank is TD Bank. Um, back then, I'm not sure who it was. Um, we enter a long-term lease with the provider, with the nonprofit provider. Um, and then the provider receives a room and board reimbursement um, or other housing funds from the state in order to pay rent to us. And when our financing is paid off, we donate the home to the provider at the end of the lease. So that was how we did that first house. And it's basically the same model that we use today um, with some small changes. So the first three years we existed, we developed zero homes. Um, but in the next seven years, we developed 300 in Connecticut using this new model. Um, so we were able, you know, to significantly increase our production by shifting to that model. And in 1991, Mansfield Training School closed as the last residents moved out into the community. So we achieved our you know, original, very specific mission. But in that same year, 
uh, we expanded to Massachusetts in addition to continuing to develop homes in Connecticut. Uh, we were selected through an RFP process to develop 11 homes for the state um, that would help them close Belchertown State School uh, in Western Mass. So we developed those 11 homes in 1991 and Belchertown State School closed in 1992. Um, and this is kind of at the point where we entered kind of the next phase uh, in our mission, which was not as tied directly to closing the state institutions, but was more generally developing housing for people uh, aging into residential services um, or new populations of mental health, acquired brain injury, and others. So between 1983 and now, we've developed over 525 homes in Connecticut, just community residence homes. And in Massachusetts, we've developed over 250. And these have been for mostly people with developmental disabilities, but also acquired brain injuries, mental health conditions, autism diagnoses, as services have expanded to other populations. Along the way, we've also done lots of other types of development, um, including condos and apartments, often for uh, involving people with disabilities, um, or at least affordable housing components, but also some market rate housing. And these have been things we've kind of approached in a more, you know, as opportunities have presented themselves, they haven't been the same kind of like steady um, flow of projects like we have for the uh, single family homes. But since 1983 uh, and through today, the, the vast majority of the housing we've done are single family homes like this one um, for a provider in Connecticut called Opportunity House. Um, you know, we have 30 active projects in Connecticut and Massachusetts that are uh, more or less like the ones I'm gonna show you now. Uh, and we are looking to expand uh, this type of development to other states. So this particular house um, it was a six bedroom renovation of an existing single family home. The original home was three bedrooms. We added three additional bedrooms in the three car garage on the property. Um, and it was developed specifically for six individuals with uh, six older adults with autism on the autism spectrum um, who were living in a split level home in the same community, but were having increasing mobility uh, challenges so that they needed a fully accessible uh, single story house. Um, so that was the reason we were uh, building this house for them. So for example, Elaine, is, um, the resident shown here is legally blind. Um, was having a hard time navigating the split level home. Uh, she also really likes to play the piano. Uh, and didn't really have space to do that uh, in the previous home. So we uh, created a kind of activity space uh, that's separate from the main living area, separate from her bedroom, where she could have her piano and kind of be able to play, uh, you know, in peace. Also, David was another one of the residents. He really likes basketball. Um, he wears Celtics and Knicks gear all the time, which I thought was was fun <laughs> and we were able to have uh, outside space for him to play basketball um, which he did not have at the previous home so here's another example of uh, a home this time in massachusetts this one is actually new construction um, we developed it for the arc of greater plymouth it's a five bedroom home it was for adults uh, with acquired brain injuries. That's been a, a lot of our work, particularly in Massachusetts, has been um, over the past 10 years for um, people with acquired brain injuries, uh, resulting from a couple lawsuits in Massachusetts. Um, so this home is fully accessible, sprinklered, has a generator, a uh, whole house generator, wide doors and hallways throughout for um, people in wheelchairs, and two fully accessible bathrooms. 
that's because the residents, um, like Judy and Elaine shown here, um, are all in wheelchairs and needed fully accessible housing to be able to do their daily activities. Um, so we have fully accessible kitchen. We have plenty of room for them to do um, their art activities and still be able to get around the house you know, you know, on their own as they're able. And they were very excited to have us come and take these photos this day. Um, and uh, Judy in particular wanted everybody to see this photo. She's very proud that she used to work at the Playboy Club in, in Boston. Um, so it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good visit. So our homes, um, you know, like these two homes, you know, from the outside, we always work to fit them into the context of the neighborhood. Very typically, they're in single family neighborhoods, but we've also done them in some campus settings, uh, particularly if it's tied to a school. Um, most of the homes we do, we work with the provider and the residents to meet their special needs, as I highlighted uh, for the residents of those two prior homes. Um, accessibility is a huge issue. There may also be licensing and code requirements. Those vary state to state, uh, but we work you know, uh, with our tenants to make sure that we're meeting all of those. In Massachusetts, because of the regulations, these are four and five bedroom homes. In Connecticut, they're three to six. I know it varies in other states. Um, and it kind of comes down to what works best for the like, the provision of services, the way rent can be paid and all that, you kind of have to make it work uh, for the financing available. Um, and the model we use is still pretty similar to the one we were using uh, back in the early 80s. It's a production model, so we're not lining up for uh, state funding or federal funding. We have a $55 million line of credit that we can use for acquisition and construction. Uh, it requires no upfront costs to our tenants. We use our line of credit. Uh, our project managers work with the clients to locate a site, make sure it's designed to meet their needs, oversee the entire construction process, and then the tenant just moves in. Uh, we do need to partner with a non -ser nonprofit service provider because we use tax exempt bonds as our permanent financing. So the nonprofit piece of it is very important. Uh, and we always want to have a service provider in the partnership because we want to know that the services are going to be provided and the tenants are going to uh, be taken care of. Our leases are long-term um, leases, usually 20 to 30 years that are tied to the length of our permanent financing. Um, and in most cases, we don't provide property management services, um, although there are some exceptions to that. Uh, and the reason our term is 20 to 30 years is that, um, and it's tied to our financing, is that when our financing is paid off, when the taxes and bond is paid off, we donate the homes to the lessee. So it's a potentially a path to ownership um, that you know, the providers find particularly attractive in Connecticut and Massachusetts. So that's my, my quick introduction to CIL. Um, as I said, we're excited to be here talking to everyone because we are looking for new opportunities, both within Connecticut and Massachusetts, but outside. Um, and I look forward to your questions.